What's going on there, folks? Good evening. It is the Earthmaster here on the Sunday evening, March 20th, 2022, about 7.30 p.m. It's going to be Texas time out here, Central Time, reporting out in Brady, Texas, the heart of Texas, setting up for severe weather tomorrow. Let's go ahead and look at earthquake activity right now. Uh, West Coast kind of lighten up with some movement, including an earthquake striking at the southern end of the Salton Sea down here right around the Brawley seismic zone. The extensional fault system here, for some reason this little map doesn't really show it, but there's a little fault system that runs through here. Uh, there was a uh, 3.2 that struck within the last hour, about 10 kilometers uh, for that earthquake. So I've got to see if we're going to kick off a swarm or not. A lot of times we see uh, a somewhat uh, larger quake, three or four magnitude strike, and then we see a, a pretty good uptick in swarming. Uh, in that region so we will keep an eye on it uh, the rest of the area up here into Southern California is still pretty active quite a few twos and ones up and down the board and a little activity around the San Bernardino Mountains up here in the Ridgecrest region some activity but nothing significant uh, about nine earthquakes or so in the region of the Ridge uh, Ridgecrest area a couple twos and some ones kicking off there also some activity within the last hour up and down the uh, San Andreas Fault here, the creeping section of the San Andreas Fault there in, in uh, California. A couple twos and some ones kicking off there within the last hour. It's been pretty active in that area over the last week or so. Let's see what else we got here. This is an older quake outside of Redding, uh, 2.4 near Man uh, Manton, California. Struck earlier this morning and uh, looks like a little activity up outside of Portland around the Mount Hood area government camp they call it uh, 0.3 at 5.5 kilometers uh, Mount St. Helens and the rest of the Cascade volcanoes look pretty quiet uh, at least according to the USGS there uh, let's go ahead and check out the rest of the country there's not a whole lot to check out here uh, some earthquake activity around the uh, Pecos Texas area and up into Kansas and Oklahoma New Madrid zone looks pretty quiet for now uh, looking at the Puerto Rico area some movement around the southwest region and the southern South America area, uh, some activity kicking up into the Peru-Chile Trench. Pretty deep movement here, 4.3, and also uh, another deeper earthquake here, 184 kilometer, 4.4, into the South America region. Uh, another area that's, uh, man, it's just it's not letting up out here. This area has seen a, quite a bit of movement here over the past couple days, and I think it could possibly be leading to something much bigger. Uh, seen a swarm of activity here along the Kermadec Trench and the Tonga region uh, with some uh, very deep earthquake activity into the the uh, subduction zone here, 513 and a 533 kilometer deep, 4.8. Uh, so got to watch this area pretty, pretty closely here uh, with this ongoing movement. A 5.8, the largest quake to strike here so far into this uh, little swarm of activity. Uh, Vanuatu, Papua New Guinea, all pretty quiet through the area. Uh, around the Philippines, we did see a 5.3 shaking things up out there in the yellow pager category. Uh, very uh, highly populated region at 10 kilometers. And some activity out here along the uh, Mariana Trench of 4.9. Pretty shallow earthquake. Japan, a uh, little bit of movement up here. Not a whole lot going on. A couple fours there and some activity throughout the uh, Middle East and also around the China region. I uh, did have a pretty good sized earthquake in the Hawaii area today. Let's go ahead and check out this movement that kicked up uh, earlier this afternoon. Had a 4 point, I believe it came in as a 4.4 4 and then got upgraded to a 4.5. Let's see what these guys are reporting here for this earthquake. Uh, 4.5, there we go, from the USGS. It was felt pretty broadly over the island. Um, this earthquake here, about 23 kilometers, so pretty deep earthquake uh, in that area. And here is the DigiFillet reports on the map, shaking activity there reported throughout the island. You can see it pretty much um, um, all over the big island and up here to the north as well. So a little activity out there on around the Mauna Kea area. All, all activity seems to be uh, confined to plate tectonics here under the big island. No volcanic activity, at least according to the USGS. There was, uh, looks like a little aftershock activity following that 4.5, a 2.5 there uh, a few hours later. But according to the uh, Hawaiian Volcano Observatory, this article was put out here this morning. Uh, and it talks about the 4.5 uh, 
located beneath Mauna Kea's northwest flank. Um, and it looks like they have had quite a few swarms of deeper movement in the past. Uh, let's see here, what do we got? With, with over 30 earthquakes located at the depths greater than 20 kilometers every year, these earthquakes are typically small. Um, it looks like Mauna Kea has experienced nine earthquakes greater than magnitude four within the past 60 years. So that's not a lot, right? Uh, nine over the last uh, uh, 40 years or 60 years, that's not a whole lot of uh, earthquake activity. So, But we will uh, definitely keep an eye on it, and uh, I'm sure these guys will as well. Uh, other activity around the Big Island Southeast region, still pretty active out here with um, about 21 earthquakes located on the Big Island. Uh, Yellowstone National Park right now, latest updated map, not a whole lot going on here at the Super Volcano. Uh, no microquakes, no major swarming going on. Uh, the Trimmer map has not been put out yet. Um, normally it comes out here at about 8 o'clock or so, in about 25 minutes or so, but I got to call it somewhat of an early night because we've got to get up early for uh, for some storm chasing tomorrow and a pretty dynamic setup. I want to go into a little bit of details here on this severe weather threat tomorrow. Uh, situated from pretty much central Texas eastward. You're going to see a line of activity develop here early afternoon uh, with some very discrete supercells capable of producing tornadoes uh, moving eastward into the uh, area around a highly populated region such as Dallas Fort Worth and Austin area. So uh, looks like uh, the majority of that region is in the enhanced area, which is uh, at least for to tornado potential includes a 10% risk of a, a greater probability of an EF2 to EF5 tornado within uh, about 25 miles of a point. So tomorrow is a big day that you need to be weather prepared. The wind is kind of a big deal as well. Uh, look, looking at a 30% chance there of uh, damaging thunderstorm winds or wind gusts of in excess of 50 knots or higher uh, within about 25 uh, miles of a point. The hatched area would be uh, wind gusts of 65 knots or greater within a within a point. Hail will also be a big threat tomorrow. We're talking about possible baseball size hail, um, which is a pretty big deal. I don't want to be hit with a baseball, that's for sure. Uh, especially falling from the sky at that speed. So a lot going on tomorrow. Um, and then uh, Tuesday is a different story. All of this shifts to the east. And that's when things uh, get a little bit more a little bit more on the amped up side but we're not going to cover that tonight um here is a model from pivotal weather it's a, a pretty cool site to check out computer models when it comes to uh, well, forecasting and whatnot this is the uh this is the significant tornado parameter and it shows right here the uh the as far as like the sounding and, and the threat level goes it's pretty elevated within this region just to the east uh, of the Austin area into the southeast of the Dallas Fort Worth region. I want to show you guys a um, FV3 high res simulated radar, uh, which is pretty cool. You can see the line of uh, thunderstorms developing early um, around the, it looks like west of Brady area, um, possibly around the San Angelo region early in the morning around nine or so, eight or nine, uh, and then supercells develop rapidly uh, as they head eastward. You can see that line of activity really ramp up. Big potential for tornado with these rotating storms here uh, outside of Austin and to the northeast. So that's a that's a big deal. Got to watch that pretty closely. Uh, and then the sign pretty much uh, intensifies into a massive amount of um, of supercells that still includes that threat of severe weather. Uh, and you can see overnight uh, the line kind of just sits there and uh, continues to ramp up severe weather for parts of e eastern Texas. Uh, definitely a pretty big deal, folks. So I hope everyone uh, is prepared as this weather event unfolds tomorrow. I will be out storm chasing live from the GoPro. Uh, going to get, uh, of course, some video and whatnot as well. But uh, we're definitely going to be live streaming as soon as the storms start. And uh, we'll hope that holds up. Uh, the entire day while we're storm chasing. We hope you guys will join us for that live stream. So make sure you uh, subscribe to the channel and uh, make sure you click that notification bell so you can get notified tomorrow when we go live. So, all right, guys, uh, what do we got for time frame? Don't want to go too long here with the uh, um, the internet here since I am kind of using the uh, 
mobile device for my uploaded uh, for uploading my videos but uh, anyway I hope everyone does stay safe out there and uh, you know kind of to make sure you keep your uh, weather radio on tomorrow and also not only that keep an eye to the sky uh, it's very possible it could uh, issue a severe thunderstorm watch Let's see if they have been listed yet. Uh, no watches in effect. This will probably come out first thing in the morning and will include, uh, include a large portion of Texas. Uh, I'm not for sure if a tornado watch is going to be issued or not. It may, but um, we'll definitely keep an eye on it. And uh, uh, if you are in that area, definitely keep uh, keep your eye to the sky and have a plan if, uh, if need be. And hope everyone does stay safe. I'll be out there and we'll be safe. I'll be out chasing with Missy Mimi's and it should be a fun hopefully eventful day uh with um you know i don't want to see anybody get hurt but uh you gotta gotta be prepared out there folks that's for sure make sure that uh keeping an eye on things but uh yeah when it comes to weather it's going to be a very active day have a good night folks we will see you tomorrow um for the storm chasing peace out